Welcome back to the Christian Meditation Podcast, Episode 71. The Sabbath was made for us. A guided Christian meditation on Mark chapter 2, verses 23 through 28. So I work as a hospice chaplain, and I've also worked as an ICU chaplain. And my purpose in making this podcast is to help you to find more peace in your life and to be open to be improved and changed by the Spirit of God by studying His scriptures. I have a special guest today. Hi, guys. This is my daughter, and she'll be sharing some insights with us. So the meditation we'll be doing today includes six parts. Relaxation, reading from the Bible, reflection on that meaning, prayer asking God for guidance, contemplative silence, and visualization on how to incorporate these changes into our lives. So wherever you are, sit comfortably now for the next 20 minutes and dedicate this time exclusively to learning from God directly from His scriptures. Go ahead and close your eyes and prepare your heart. As you begin, you feel the rhythm of your body. You feel your heart gently beating. You feel your muscles. Over the time of this meditation, your muscles will relax, your breathing will slow, and your mind will calm, all focusing on the scriptures. So today's meditation is going to be a little bit different. I invite you to continue harnessing the deep breathing exercises that are done in many of the podcasts that I do. But today we're going to do a visualization exercise in preparation for receiving this message. I want you to imagine that there's a scanner directly above your head that can capture the whole of your body all at once. And it can look at all of your different muscles and joints and your heartbeat, your, your thoughts. And just observe that. What does that feel like to know that you can be aware of that all at the same time? The scanner notices your body slowing and gently relaxing as your breathing slows and your thoughts also slow. Now imagine that the scanner lifts higher above your head. Now viewing the position that you occupy in the room in which you're in. Perhaps there's other people in adjacent rooms. Perhaps not. As the scanner gently raises higher and higher, you see yourself in the context of the room in which you are. Imagine the things around you, where they came from, how far they've traveled to be right next to you right now. As the scanner rises higher and higher, you become aware of your position in the street where you live. And as it rises higher, the city and then the continent, or perhaps island. And eventually, it's just looking down on you from space. If you go back even further, you're just one speck on one small planet on the solar system. And go back even further, we're just one solar system on the edge of the arm of one galaxy in the universe. Imagine the relationship you have to all of these things, how we are a minute speck, and the relationship we have to God in all of this. That he can metaphorically cup his hands across this entire galaxy at once. Now as we become Aware of our bodies, we allow them to slow and gently relax as we continually place focus on this scripture we're about to read. So first we'll be reading from the King James Version. And it came to pass that he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day. And his disciples began, as they went, to pluck the ears of corn. And the Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do they do on the Sabbath that which is not lawful? And he said unto them, Have ye read what David did, when he had need, and was an hungered, 
he and those that were with him, how he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar the priest, and did eat of the showbread, which was not lawful to eat, but for the priests, and gave also to them which were with him. And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. What does this scripture mean? What ideas, thoughts, and words stuck out to you as you were listening to these scripture? Continue breathing deeply as you ponder this meaning. Now we'll be reading from the NRSV. One Sabbath, he was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said unto him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abathar was high priest, and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful to eat for any but the priests to eat. And he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for humankind, and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. Take several moments now and reflect on this scripture. So in the Old Testament, God placed serious focus on establishing the Sabbath day. All the way back from the creation of the earth, God established the Sabbath. Exodus 20 shows that one of the Ten Commandments even is to keep the Sabbath day holy. And not only that, but the command extends to the servants and even animals. So in the Law of Moses, the consequence for not honoring the Sabbath was death. In Numbers chapter 15, a man was put to death for collecting sticks on the Sabbath. However, in Isaiah 56, the keeping of the Sabbath was a sign of the covenant, which also correlated to the temple, the mountain of the Lord. Even the blessing of manna from heaven, which was from God, conformed to the Sabbath day during the 40 years the Israelites stayed in the desert after the exodus. Suffice it to say that the Sabbath was not made light of by God. It's understandable then that the Jews would honor and would worry so much about keeping the Sabbath holy. They attempted to take the scriptures and dissect them to figure out exactly what they should do on the Sabbath and what it truly meant to honor the Sabbath. So when Jesus was healing with the power of God on the Sabbath, this appeared to violate God's law. And this example is yet another example of it. When his disciples picked and ate the food, Jesus taught that he was fulfilling the law of Moses. So we shouldn't take this to mean that the Sabbath is no longer important to him. Some people have suggested that the translation of the above scripture states that the Sabbath was created on account of us, not for us. In other words, God knew that we needed to establish a holy day of rest for our benefit and not as another punishment or rigid command. 
So as Christians, we can experience deeper knowledge of God and greater connection with Him by honoring His holy day. He longs to be closer to us in our lives. And the Sabbath is an amazing opportunity to do just that. So ponder for a few moments how your weekly activities align with the concept of the Sabbath. Please join me in prayer. God, as we reflect on the scriptures that we're reading here, we ask for guidance, inspiration, to know how we can live our lives closer to the and to the Spirit. Bless our hearts and bless our minds that we can be guided, that we can be sanctified by participating in the Sabbath. Guide us to know how we can better use your holy day of rest. And this we say in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I invite you to continue in prayer now. I'll give you a couple more moments. Now in these next few moments, I want you to just sit in contemplative silence, partaking of the Spirit of God.
I'll give you a couple more moments. Now in the next few moments, I want you to try to articulate what thoughts or what impressions that you've had and just think them through right now and try to put them into words. What insights you've gained or what experience you've had through this meditation. I'll give you a couple more moments. Now visualize in as much detail as possible how you can incorporate the changes or insights that you've gained as you've gone throughout this meditation. So visualize them as though you already were doing the things that you're wanting to do or that are already living in accordance with the insights that you've gained. I'll give you a couple more moments. A couple things to share real quick and then I'll get to the final question and the final thought. First of all, thank you to all the patrons who donate on Patreon. This month I uh, purchased some advertisement on Overcast, which is a podcast app. And I've seen a lot of uh, downloads from that so that seems to be helping as well and just generally sharing the message of this uh, this podcast so thank you for that if you'd like to reach out to me you can do so at christianmeditationpodcast.com forward slash contact christianmeditationpodcast.com forward slash contact also you can go to patreon.com forward slash christianmeditationpodcast to donate to the show so here's the final question that I want you to ponder tomorrow and today and throughout the rest of the week. What principles do you hold to you concerning the Sabbath? What principles do you hold to you concerning the Sabbath? So as we spend time with God's Spirit, we feel calm and we feel peaceful. That's why we enjoy things like this meditation. This is even more possible when we spend time dedicated to reflect on His Word and direct time to Him, and dedicate time to Him. In this framework, we see that the Sabbath as the greatest gift of God, a dedicated day where we can focus on Him. So if we do dedicate this day to worship and peace, it can help us draw nearer to Him. So over the next couple of days, perhaps, you can consider how you can better harness the Sabbath in your worship to help you draw nearer to God. And consider things like avoiding unnecessary work or causing others to work unnecessarily. Ultimately, though, God loves us. He created the Sabbath for us and not the other way around. And we can be thoughtful on how best to benefit from His gift by drawing nearer to Him. I know that if we do this, we can be even more sensitive to His Spirit and learn and grow continually by directly from Him. I know that He wants to be near us. He wants close to us. And I know that our hearts long for this as well. So use the Sabbath as a tool to do just that. 
And I know we will be blessed. And this I say in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. One Sabbath he was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing that which is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priests to eat. And he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for humankind, and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. You want to try again? Mm. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> 